Hello again, Math Ninja here. I'm very sorry I've been absent for the last week. It was midterm week and I had to prepare and fight the battle. The battle that is the midterm. Calm before the storm. So I'm sorry for the absence. So today, we will talk about a few more concepts. I'm very sorry that I haven't been going through proofs, but mostly definition. But I've always find that definitions help you in developing concepts and developing proofs. Never attempt a proof unless you know the definition, like the back of your hand. That is my number one advice. I see many people, they try to prove something, but they don't know the definition. You'll fail. So always know definitions before attempting any proofs. And know them very well. <coughs> but, oh, also, actually, so today, let us talk about the concept of compactness. A very important concept. So, and not only very important in the equivalences of compactness also, but the main definition of compact is that <coughs> oh I think it's better. Definition of compactness is that for maybe before com I define compactness, I define an open cover. So an open cover is a collection of open sets that let's say A A A uh, actually does not need to be countable. A open. Well, for ease, let's make it countable. <coughs> but open covers do not need to be countable. Mm. So let's say A I open. Then an open cover for A is a collection of A I. such that this collection covers A, meaning A is a subset, uh, A is a subset of the union of I equals one to, let's say, well, N does not have to be finite. So let's say collection union of all A, I in the set of our collection, let's call it script alpha. I can't do script alpha, but let's say alpha. <coughs> That's an open cover. Notice two things. I should say A. No, I shouldn't say A. Let's say A. Um, a children. Let's say a bunch of open cover. Open. Open. So, this guy's the East Union here is the open cover. So, open cover does not need to be countable, does not need to be infinite, could be infinite though. So, an open cover is a collection of open sets that when united through union, A is, connect, is contained in that cover. Now, if every open cover has a finite subcover. So, in other words, if I can write, for example, mean of i equals one to infinity of a i, <coughs> and a is contained in this union, and I can say that a is contained in some a subset of a i, union of i equals one to n. N finite A I then this and this is true for and N can be different for each one, but if every open cover has a finite sub cover sub cover, then this set A is compact. So Straight out definition. Definition A compact 
much better highlighter. I stole this from my RA. Oh, I should erase that. I did not steal. I confiscated. Yeah, much better. A compact. If. Remember when we use definitions? If always means if and only if. <coughs> Just letting you know. Theorems, it's different. Definitions, different. So A compact, if every open cover of A has a finite subcover. Key here, remember, every, the word every, the word any, the word exists, the, so the word some, very important. See, you can find a subcover for that, for example, is finite. We can find a subcover, we can find, for example, one subcover that is infinite, but has a finite subcover. But that doesn't mean everyone has that property. Remember, every, whenever you do a proof with the word every in it, you pick an arbitrary open cover. And you show finite open cover. Also, whenever you do most theorems with compactness, always good <coughs> in that theorem to assume when you do compactness, you have the compactness. And the second part of the theorem, you say assume the opposite of that. And when you apply the compactness, you find a finite subcover. Try to find a contradicted. But I'll show you an example of that next time, or one of these days. So, remember, <coughs> sometimes it's hard to deal with different with that definition of compactness. So we deal. So we use. There's a theorem that says compactness is equivalent to something that is easier to use or easier to use in some cases, called sequential compactness. So there's a theorem called volzano vastras theorem. I cannot spell it correctly because I'm not American or German or whatever. <laughs> that says that every subcover, every, I'm sorry, my bad, that every, that compact, a set A is compact if and only if A is sequentially compact. I should define what sequentially compact is. Oh, by the way, e example of um, an open set that is compact. For example, all open sets containing it. You can say if we many here. Or you, and then we can choose out the one. Then we can choose. Then we can choose a finite number of these, and it will still cover. And that's something that's compact. So A is, if and only if A is sequentially compact. So, what does sequentially compact means? Let me remember. I think I may be getting too old. But thank goodness, you're never too old for mathematics. Never. Never too young either. No, actually, I was at a, uh, a meeting for the Putnam competition. And there was this 13-year-old there. He was a national Spelly Bee champion. And he was attending college courses. Very impressive. Smart kid. I think his name was Evan. He did a very nice proof in Corey involving the Fibonacci numbers. It was um, very nice. Anyway, it's, it's almost 10 minutes, so I'm just going to stop and then restart.